Welcome to the AngularJS session. Um, I call it the one framework to rule them all. And hopefully until the end of the session you will agree with me. Um, let me introduce myself first. So my name is uh, Shai Friedman. I am a founder of a company named Code Value. And what I do there is consultancy, uh, training, uh, writing code. I write code. Um, so everything is software related uh, eventually. So before we start, let's, you guys, uh, how many here are web developers? Yeah, most of you, that makes sense. Um, how many of you have already played with AngularJS? Okay, cool. How many are actually using it in production? Okay, cool. Um, so uh, hopefully everyone will uh, learn uh, a thing or two until the end of the session. So, um, Angular, let's start with an interview. Um, Angular started from uh, 2009, which is uh, six years ago. That's a long time. And nobody really cared about it, right? Uh, there were two guys working on it. Uh, as an open source project, and they both were Google employees at the time. Um, Google saw that it was a good idea, and they decided to take it in and uh, create uh, uh, an entire team for that. So now there is an entire team of more than 10 developers working full-time in Google uh, on AngularJS. And the thing is, is that AngularJS has exploded and it actually being used today by thousands of developers worldwide, which is crazy. A lot of um, a lot of software is written with AngularJS today, including the biggest names in the market. Um, Virgin, HBO, Google AdWords uh, is probably the biggest and largest AngularJS application in the world. At least that's what Google is saying. And uh, which is good because Google is uh, responsible for that, so they're kind of dog footing themselves, which is good. Um, General Motors is um, is interesting because if you buy a GM car today, you get Angular JS inside your car. I don't know how you feel about it, but it is exciting. Uh, hopefully, no bugs in the code. Um, Anyway, uh, um, just to see how much people, how much in, um, traction this thing gets, um, let's see um, Google Trends. So let me do this. So this is Google Trends for Android JS, No Code JS, XJS, Angular JS, React JS, and everything that ends with JS. Um, now, this is the interesting thing here this. So you can see that at 2007 this yellow line is actually XJS, which is, it's big because it was the first one out there. But you can see that until about 2012, 2013, no one really cared about JavaScript frameworks. But then everything exploded and the blue line is Angular, and the rest of them here are just other frameworks, and you can see XJS going down, uh, maybe because it's the only one who costs money, so people don't pay for anything today, so this is one thing. And you can see this purple line here, just, just here, which is doing a small uh, um, jump for itself, and this is React JS. So it's kind of going up at the moment, but uh, you can see Angular and the rest. And I can tell you from my experience leading the web division in my company is that all the demand for developers on, on the web today is, is just Angular. Everybody wants Angular, and there are no people who know Angular. We try to find them but they just don't exist. 
so uh, hopefully after this session you can say you have experience with Angular and you get a job. Um, so that's, that's the idea. Uh, <laughs> um, anyway, by the way, just, just to know, uh, Google Trends is done by Google, Angular is done by Google, so they might alter this chart a bit, but it still speaks for itself. So, uh, a lot of people use it, and what is it? It is a complete UI framework who is giving you everything that you need in order to create a JavaScript-based web application. It has everything included inside, and it has an opinion. It is an opinionated software. And we will see what I mean during the, the demo, uh, because you need to follow uh, what, whatever that Angular is telling you, because otherwise, bad things would happen. So, what we're going to see, we're going to do a demo throughout the session. This is what we're going to do. We have this task system. It's called Tasky because it's for small tasks. And what we will be able to do at the end of the session is add a title, add a description, and um, add tasks, complete them, and save and load. We'll do a lot of stuff in this uh, 40 minutes that are left. Um, I should, I should uh, smile now. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is what we're going to do. So let's start and talk about the different things that Angular has got. So the first thing I want to talk about is data binding. How many people here uh, has been working with a framework that gives you data binding? Good for you. Because for me, data binding is amazing. You know the, the feeling? Of, of creation, <coughs> or watching the sunrise after the darkest night, or you know when you're in a party and everybody's uh, jumping around and dancing, and then you stop for a second and you think, hmm, I'm having the time of my life right now. So this is data binding. Now let me show you that. Um, so this is my code, right? It's uh, very simple. Uh, all the HTML here, let me do this so you can see. Um, it's very simple, all the HTML is just bootstrap, uh, so it looks nice. Um, and what I want to do, let's go around here, that's good, and put input inside. So input type text, ng-model equals uh, text, let's do txt, and, and another one, and another one, and txt. Cool, good. So, um, let's see that. So I refresh, and now instantly I get these uh, text boxes, right? And now I can write stuff, and immediately they uh, are data bound, so I can see them changing throughout all the, da the, the input fields and the text that are data bound to the same thing. So I can change this, I can change that, I can change that, I can just do anything and, and it just replaces the, the text and the value. Now, it's very, very cool. It, this is a very, very simple example, of course, but it doesn't get very much more complex than that in, in very, very big applications. And it's amazing, it works in, in so huge applications and complex applications. And I just, I love data binding. I don't know if you noticed, but it's just amazing. So this is just a, a small example, but we're gonna uh, go through it again and see, uh, see that throughout the session. The next thing is MVVM, or Model View uh, view Model. Now, Angular has been known as an MVC framework, but throughout the last year or so, uh, they've, they've changed or shifted, let's say, to an MVVM or uh, uh, kind of a framework, and it makes a lot of sense. What the idea here? 
the idea is that M is the model, it's just a plain old JavaScript object. The view is HTML, right? So it's just HTML uh, with some dynamic capabilities uh, that are added to it, and we'll see it. And the view model is again an object, a JavaScript object, which handles the interaction with the user or uh, manipulating the data or stuff like that. So it's a very, very nice um, concept and pattern for UI applications, and Angular is coming with it. And so let's let's see how we do it. So what I want to do now is I want to take this tasks and, and this form and make it uh, work, right? I want to add a task and I want the task to work. So what I need, I need to create a controller for this, uh, for this page. So I'm going to this container and ng controller, this controller, and let's call it main controller as VM. Now, when I'm saying main controller, this is the name. We'll see in a second how we uh, actually uh, say that this is the name of the controller. And SVM means that inside this div, this div that I've just created here inside, um, I could interact with the controller via the VM variable. So everything would be a VM dot something. So now that we have that, let's go to the code. Never add a script inside the page. Not a good practice, but it's a demo. I'm allowed to do that. So everything in Angular is, uh, it comes with inside a module. Uh, a module is just like if you're uh, coming from .NET, it's just like an assembly. If you're coming from Java, it's like a package. Uh, it just contains stuff. Uh, that's the mere value of it. So, I have the module, so now I'm going to add a controller to it. So, let's do M controller, and I'm giving it a name, and this is the name that I defined in the HTML. Now, inside here, we'll create, uh, we'll give it the function, which will be the controller which we are going to create right here. Now, this is my function, and here I'm going to add functions uh, uh, and, and variables that I need for the view. So the first thing I need to have in a task management system is an array of tasks, right? That's, that's important. So this dot tasks equals this, equals an empty array. So I'm just putting an empty array there. Now, I need two more variables. The first one is the title of the new task and the description of the new task. So, I like to define these things ahead. So, this dot title um, task title equals null and this dot task description equals null. So, and now I have all of this. And last but not least, let's add a function that uh, adds a new task. So main controller dot proto type dot add task equals function. And all I need to do now is this dot tasks dot push, right? And let's create our model because this is a this is my object that contains the data. So a task will have an ID, right? And the ID would be just this.task.length. The ID should be unique, so this is not a good practice in production. Do not write this in production, right? But uh, for now, it's okay. Um, title, which will gonna be this.task.title. And description, which is gonna be this.task.title dot task description. Okay. So, uh, we have this. Now what we need to say is where this task title and task description come from. So let's go back here to our inputs. Uh, okay. So this is the, let's do this. This is the text input for the title. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say ng model equals vm dot task type. So what I said, I now have data binding between the code of my controller and and the view. Okay, so vm dot task title equals the this dot dot task title inside the controller. Um, let's do the same for the description. Let's do this and ng dash model equals vm dot task description. Now, last but not least, what I need to, to do is tell the, the button that when it's clicked, call the controller add task function. So we're inside the button now, uh, and we do ng dash click. Let's do this ng dash click vm dot add task. Now, for those of you who've been working in the web for a long time, ng click probably reminds you of another thing called on click, right? And this was something that we used like long, long time ago, and it was the best thing ever. You could write JavaScript just inside the HTML, and it, it was so much fun. Um, and then, then jQuery came around and said, oh no, you do not do that. You do not write JavaScript inside HTML, right? So on click what became kind of obsolete. Um, now, Angular came around and said, okay, this is now called ng-click, so it's not on-click anymore, so it's fine. So this is actually the only way you can do that, right? Um, you can not do this via code. And when you get used to it, it's, it's awesome, so we, we're happy with that. Um, so, now, just to see that it's working, what I want to do is once I'm done adding tasks, um, we'll make it a bit more usable to the user as well. We'll just refresh the task title and task description. So what should happen now is that once I click add task, the title and description should go away and the, the tasks array should have another task inside. So let's refresh. What should happen now is this and that should go away and they did. We still don't see any tasks here. This is just the stub uh, because we didn't do anything about it. But this will do in a second. So what we've just seen is the model, which is just the task object with ID, title, and description. The view model, which is the controller, and the view that we interact with via data binding. If it's ng-click or ng-model or other stuff that we'll see in a second. The next thing I want to talk about is HTML. Who of you knows who this guy is? Does anybody know? No, no, no one. This guy actually in the last Olympics, uh, they had this song and dance. And in the middle of the dance, they did a circle. And he came from down, down, um, down the, um, the, you know, where they come from, <laughs> the earth, okay, uh, with a small elevator, just up. And then they danced around him, and he went down and disappeared. Now, this guy is called Sir Tim Berners-Lee, and he invented the World Wide Web. And this is why they paid uh, respect in a kind of a weird way, but it did happen. Um, now, when he started it, uh, it was 1989, which is 26 years ago. Uh, this is what he wanted. This is the first browser. This is called uh, this, this was called the World Wide Web, okay? And what uh, Tim Berners-Lee actually wanted, he wanted to share documents in a way that you couldn't do before. And he succeeded, it was amazing. However, 
what we did, we said, oh, that's good. We love you, Tim Berners-Lee, uh, but we don't want to share documents. We want applications. And then, let me show you a, a really nice application. Oh, I close it. Uh, for example, um, TweetDeck. Yeah, I don't have internet. We'll see if, if that goes. Um, by the way, did you know that this is a game? You click space and then you start playing. Um, yeah, uh, things that you learn. Um, anyway, um, anyway, um, we did applications. Um, and when you have applications, you know what? Let's let's show the Google Trends. Uh, this is kind of an application. Now, we have the charts here, and we have this thing, and the thing is that I can do something like that, and I can actually copy and paste everything here. Now, in applications, this should not happen, right? This, this is something very weird. Why would I need to copy and paste the application headers and data and stuff, everything combined together without any access to how I copy and paste it. This is a result of Tim Berners-Lee's work about creating uh, uh, just documents. So today we're kind of stuck with a... Why did it happen? Oh, okay. That 25 years ago, it made sense, but now it's not that good. So, what I want from Angular, and it does help me a bit, is kind of reduce the pain. Okay, it will not make it go away, but it will help in uh, uh, making it a bit better. So, we've already seen ng dash uh, model and ng dash uh, click. We're going to see some more now. So, what I want to do first is actually, let's go back here, showing these tasks, right? Because now I'm adding tasks and not doing anything at all. So, let's do that. So, I'm going back here, and these are my stop tasks. Let's remove the second one, because we don't need it anymore. And what I want to do, let's do this. What I want to do is, is that for every task that I have, I want to uh, repeat this element with the right data. So, what I have in Angular is what's called ng, ng repeat, and I can say for every task in vm.tasks, uh, track by task.id. Now, this is just like a for each loop. Uh, track by is a performance improvement uh, that Angular has, has added. And um, I know just if you're doing that, always use always use track by. It's best practice. Anyway, uh, now for every iteration, I will be able to use this task object. So let's do that. I'm going to say task dot title and task dot description. Uh, task dot description. Okay. So what's going to happen now? When I refresh, there are no tasks. Only my great data binding example. And title, description, and add task, and it's added, right? And again, and it's added again. So the very, very cool thing about this thing here that we're seeing is that this template has no idea what's controlling it. It can be one controller, it can be a different controller, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that it has an array that is called vm.tasks. Where is my here? vm.tasks. The uh, other end of this is here. Here, when I'm adding a new task in my main controller, all I do is pushing a new model into my tasks array. I have no connection whatsoever to the HTML, to the DOM, to whatever, right? And this is amazing. This is data binding at its best because now 
I can have this code uh, unit tested very, very easily. Like, unit test is not so easy, but it's much easier than uh, having jQuery finding stuff in your HTML DOM and then trying to figure out how to uh, mock this. So, um, um, this is much, much better. And I can actually now control every, um, every page that has this uh, template. And you can ch change templates or whatever, but I don't really have the strict connection between the view model and the view. They're just connected via data binding, which is awesome. So let's make this even more interesting. Uh, what I want to do, I want to add a um, um, button that allows me to complete tasks. Because if I have a task management system without the ability to uh, uh, finish tasks, to complete them, um, that kind of sucks. Because I like finishing tasks, even if I hadn't finished them. Uh, so, uh, let's do P class. Uh, text right. So it will be on the right. And add a button. And it will be complete task. And in the button, I'll do ng click vm dot complete task. Now. The problem with this code is now, in the controller, I kind of need to understand where this click is coming from. Which one of my tasks is now being completed. So the cool thing about this is that I can actually re uh, give it parameters and send them to the, to the uh, function. So this solved this problem. So let's take this and implement that in the controller. So first of all, we need to add a completed flag to my data. So by default, it's going to be false. And let's do main controller dot prototype dot complete task equals function task. And all I need to do here is task dot completed equals true. And now I'll have the button, I can click it, it will become true, the completed flag, but I cannot see that this thing is completed. So let's show it to the user. So I'm going back right here, uh, right here, here, okay, yeah. So this is my repeater, right? And I want to change the CSS so the background will become green when the task is finished. So what I have is what's called ng-class. It has this, this kind of strange syntax. Um, let's take this um, and put this here with success. So what it means is use this CSS class whenever task.completed is true. So this is the CSS class you need to add when task.completed is true. When task.completed is false, this will be removed from the CSS class. Um, and you don't, again, you don't need to do add, remove classes or stuff like that with J, that you do uh, with jQuery. So let's refresh now. Add some tasks. And add tasks, and now when I complete it, it becomes green, right? And this is again a cool feature because I can now control the CSS via the template because this is something that template is responsible for. And on the other hand, inside my code, when I look here, again, I didn't have anything related to the HTML. All I did was just saying task of completed equals true. Um, this is Angular's built-in uh, HTML helpers, and there are more than 50 or 60 or 70 of those. So if you're interested in that, go to the Angular documentation and look for the, the rest of it. 
the killer feature for me in Angular is what's called directives. And directives are just a way to create reusable components on the web. And when Angular started, it wasn't really easy to create them. Now almost every framework out there is doing that. I still like the way Angular is doing that. Um, but it was a killer feature and it's still a killer feature. It's uh, an amazing thing to have reusable components inside your application because what happens eventually in your applications, you will go and create an infrastructure, right? An infrastructure of components that you can reuse throughout your one application or multiple applications and that's it. So you, if you create the, uh, the right infrastructure, creating the actual pages will become much, much faster than uh, you are used to. So let's see that. Uh, what I want to do, I want to take, let's go and show you it here. I want to take everything that's inside the task, right? That show you, shows you the title, the description, and has the button to complete the task. I want to be, it to become a different component that I can reuse and show tasks throughout my application. So let's start um, going back to the code and just like I added a controller, I need to add a directive. So on top of the model that I have created, I'm adding a directive. Uh, let's call it task. Uh, and what it gets... Oops. And what I'm returning here is um, a configuration uh, entity. And this configuration entity, the first thing I need to write there is, oh, sorry, and return this configuration. Yes, okay. So the first thing I need to say is, What's the template URL for it? Because every directive is a reusable component that has its own HTML. So let's call it task.html and we'll create it in a second. Um, let's. Oops. So I created this thing, let's save it as task.html and. Let's take the actual HTML here and save it to there. So this is what I want to have there. I'll just take it out of here and put it here. So, oops. Um, yeah. So this is what I want to show here. This is my task. This is enough. Now, going back to the directive, I have the template URL. And the next thing I want to uh, write here is uh, how this directive interacts with the outer world. Because think about a reusable component. You want this component to have its own variable, uh, to have its own uh, data. You don't want this data to be shared with other components. And if you even use the same component multiple times, you don't want them to overlap each other. So, what I need to say is how this component interacts with the outside world, if any. So, every component has this notion of scope. So, just like functions has their own context, and um, blocks in c -sharp and Java have their own context, um, scopes in Angular are the same thing, and they're, they're exact the same thing, and directives have scopes. And when we create something like that, and write it like that, they have isolated scopes. So these things, you know, they are isolated once you say uh, they have this kind of scope. But again, when you're isolating and interact with the outside world, so you say how they interact. So what I want to have here is the source of my task. What is the source of my task? The actual task object. So within my directive, 
my task object will be called source, because this is how I called it. From the outside world, it can be called whatever um, it's called. And this means two-way data binding. So if I change this source object inside my code, my directive code, it will be changed um, in the um, uh, outside world, and if I change it in the outside world, it will be changed as well inside my directive. Um, so, let's save this, and the next thing I need to do, uh, actually, is here, inside my task uh, data, and my task template, it's not called task anymore, it's called um, source, right? So it's source.title, it's going to be vm.source, so we'll make it again, vm.source, source, source, okay, and vm.complete task, cool. Now, last but not least, I need to add the behavior to my task because uh, every reusable, reusable component will have some kind of a behavior. So, um, in order to do that, we say a few things. So the first thing is controller. This is this is going to be my controller, and we're going to call it uh, task controller controller. And I also need to say controller as just like I wrote at the beginning. So I'm going to say it's going to be called VM as well. And last but not least is bind bind to controller. <laughs> it wasn't that funny. Bind to controller equals true. Now this bind to controller thing is kind of new. It it came when um, Angular changed uh, the idea from MVC to MVVM. So now we are all about the controller. Before that, it was something kind of else. So from now on, this is kind of the best practice. So this is how we're doing that. So again, let's create the task controller. Uh, let's do this. And um, what I need uh, now is you can see that in the button that I have inside of my directive, I have this complete task uh, function. But this is missing from uh, my, my new controller, which is the task controller. So what I want to do now, I'm just going to grab it, this uh, complete task function from the main controller and put it in my task controller. So instead of main, it's going to be task. Um, I think we're kind of done. Uh, let's oops. let's try it. So if everything goes correctly, I will see the exact same thing, right? I just add task, and of course, nothing works, which is great. Um, yeah. So usually we get some kind of an, an error, which is not what we got now, which is great. Uh, let's see. So we did have um, this amazing thing without anything. Um, so there is something control. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. What? What is it? All right. Thank you. Yeah, the important thing is to actually use the directive. It's kind of kind of important. Um, so when we have uh, thank you when we have the uh, directive ready and we do want to use it. So this is how we use it. We create. We just created a new element, right? And Remember the source? So this is how we say source equals task. So what's going to happen now? We have a new HTML element, 
uh, the source inside is data bound, two way data bound to this task object. And now, when I actually used it, it actually looks okay. And when I complete the task, now it doesn't work. Um, but now I do have an exception. It says completed as undefined. Uh, uh, task. Uh, VM complete task because task is now called VM dot source. Okay. Um, well, yes. Okay. So let's refresh and hopefully everything will work. And eh, almost, almost. Um, VM dot source. Sorry. That's right, right. Oh, I need you guys with me all the time. Can you come with me back to work? Uh, you're great at this debugging thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what happened here, which is very interesting, because the actual ng class is outside, right? So what we saw is data bind because we completed the task from within the uh, uh, task directive, and because we have two-way data binding, we got it outside, which is awesome. And again, now I can use this task directive everywhere in my application um, and, and reuse it and do whatever I want with it. And of course, you can do a lot of components in every. Every uh, Angular application, you will have a lot of these components. Um, so, uh, I want to uh, talk about one other thing, um, which is this. Which is not this, it's this. Okay. Um, something that I didn't want to talk about is services. And services is just Angular's infrastructure idea about where to put your logics code. Because I don't know how, how much experience you have with JavaScript applications, but they tend to become gigantic, and every single JavaScript file becomes like 10,000 lines of code, and go ahead and succeed in, fi in finding bugs in this code. So Angular has this idea of um, um, having services which contain your logics. So services will have like 8,000 lines of code and the rest will have less. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It's a better idea of architecture and it comes just with Angular. Um, so you don't need to think about, wait, how I'm gonna do the architecture? You have the architecture. Directives have components. Controllers control the application, the, the actual user interface. And services contain the logics, whether it's uh, uh, talking with the server, whether it's uh, doing some um, web worker stuff, or talking with the local storage. Whatever that is, it's just uh, um, services. So it's really, really easy. Now, the third thing I want to talk about uh, at the end is learning curve. Angular is amazing. Really, I've been working with Angular for the past three and a half years since it was uh, a beta. And we've done amazing applications with it. But there is one problem, which is Angular is a bit deceiving. Why? Because when you start working with it, it's amazing. You say, wow, it's so much fun, everything works, I can, I, I become so much more effective, I, I finish my tasks in a day. And then after a month of this hype, you're like, oh my god, what am I doing? You're stuck. And, and you're just stuck. And there's nowhere to go from this and on, right? You're like, okay, I'll, I'll just... Uh, uh, take a vacation, and hopefully when I go back, uh, this will be solved. Um, it's not working, this idea. I tried not working. Um, anyway, 
learn Angular before you start. Try it out before you start. Get a trainer uh, to do a course. Uh, read. Try it out yourself. Get someone who's done it before. It's crucial so you don't get stuck and need to rewrite everything after one month. And believe me, it's about one month. If after one month you're like, oh, everything is okay, it will uh, come to you about two months after that. <laughs> it will get to you eventually. So just beware of that, really. It's really, really important because the learning curve is kind of steep. Um, when you migrate existing applications, this is most of what we do in Code Value. We, mi we migrate applications uh, from, for example, Silverlight, Flash, even VB6 uh, to Angular. This is what our customers are uh, uh, asking for. And when you do this, so first, again, learn, learn, learn Angular before you start, not uh, during development, before you start. Create an infrastructure first of components, reusable components that you're going to use throughout the application and only then start implementing the views. That means that you have like a month or so of creating the infrastructure before you even start seeing real application screens. And it's totally fine. And, and it's really crucial because if you don't create an infrastructure, you're just using Angular in a just... Uh, uh, a very uh, silly way, let's call it like that, because you don't use the capabilities of Angular, and that's a shame. And last but not least, all browsers. All browsers are bad for your health, um, and Angular are things like that as well. So, from Angular 1.3, which I think is already about a year old, they are not supporting IE8. Um, so, just so if you have a requirement to support IE8, then I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, what I think uh, we'll do now is just have questions, right? Um, yeah, that's uh, that's coming. That's coming. Angular 2 is coming. It's frightening, but it's coming. Um, and it's awesome. And everything I talked about today is just about Angular 2.0 uh, ready. So, uh, yeah, but that's another uh, one hour talk. So, questions? Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm Gary. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, could you give uh, some thoughts about Angular 2.0 existing projects? And uh, should we all start learning TypeScript or we can going to uh, Okay, cool. So, so uh, do you want to uh, want to talk about this Angular 2.0 and TypeScript? Now, TypeScript is um, a JavaScript superset. It's a programming language that compiles to uh, JavaScript. And Angular 2.0 decided to use TypeScript to write Angular 2.0. Um, we've been using TypeScript for like three years now uh, in my company. This is something that we uh, decided and it's awesome. It's, it's amazing and it helps so much when writing applications with people who are not JavaScript developers or more static language people. And uh, also, in general, it just improves the quality of code. So, TypeScript, definitely. I would recommend all of you to go figure out what TypeScript is and start using it immediately. Um, about Angular 2.0, it does, it is going to change some stuff. When I do this session about Angular 2.0, it has a different code. Uh, however, everything that I showed you here is ready for Angular 2.0, which means that once you want to move from Angular 1 to Angular 2, you will have uh, the smallest amount of changes to do. Um, but yeah, we still don't know when it's going to go out or uh, what exactly it's going to contain. So it's all about uh, hoping for the best. Yeah.